What's a gamer to do when you don't have a lot of time but you want to enjoy some fantasy-based tabletop adventure gaming? I mean jump right in the pit, kick down some doors, hack up some skeletons, when you and your friends just want to skip all the pleasantries and throw some dice without all the trappings of character sheets and alignment and, well, role-playing? Hi, I'm Dan Larson and this is the History of Hero Quest. HeroQuest is a fantasy adventure board game created in 1989 by Milton Bradley and Games Workshop. It's the pure hack and slash die rolling manic adventure of Dungeons and Dragons without having to do any homework. HeroQuest is D&D if you speed the whole thing up by limiting the action to fighting and looking for fights. There is far less of a chance of the game going off course, no need to create modules or freestyle, no need to reference an encyclopedic tome to find out if chewing bubblegum is considered a free action while kicking ass. Dungeons & Dragons was created in the 1970s by Gary Gygax, Dave Arnes, and TSR. If you want that whole story, check out our video, The Tragedies and Triumphs in the History of Dungeons & Dragons. The short version is that by 1989, Dungeons & Dragons had been around long enough, it was popular enough, that it was time to update some of the rules. TSR released a new second edition of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. It condensed and abbreviated some parts, expanded other parts, it tried to step away from some of the controversy related to the inclusion of demons and devils and character classes that were straight up evil aligned. The goal was to expand the audience by appealing to a younger demographic. Still teens, yes, but more on the 13 end of the spectrum. Simplification was supposed to be part of the plan. Appealing to a younger audience and capitalizing on the popularity of D&D wasn't exclusive to TSR. Milton Bradley, longtime manufacturer of board games like Shoots and Ladders, Candyland, Life, Twister, The Dark Tower, and also, as of 1984, a division of Hasbro wanted to engage that younger fantasy gaming audience that D&D did as well. Meanwhile, a company based in London, England called Games Workshop had been a part of the gaming scene since the 1970s, first as a creator of games, second as a publisher of a gaming magazine called White Dwarf, third as a physical store location to buy games and magazines. Games Workshop began publishing White Dwarf in the late 70s, covering some of the most popular games of the era, like Dungeons & Dragons, RuneQuest, and Traveler. Covering them went as far as including unique adventures for those games exclusive to the magazine. White Dwarf also featured how-tos for painting miniatures and creating scene elements for those miniature-based tabletop adventure campaigns. This was not just a service to their readers, but also a way to promote their own products. Because in 1979, Games Workshop helped found Citadel Miniatures, one of the oldest and most popular makers of gaming miniatures. In 1983, they published the first edition of their Warhammer franchise. By 1989, Games Workshop knew everything Milton Bradley wanted to know about creating a fantasy adventure game that could compete in a highly competitive market. Or rather, a man named Stephen Baker, who worked at Games Workshop, knew everything he needed to know. From 1982 to 1984, he worked part-time and was paid in product. In 1984, he became a store manager. In 1986, Milton Bradley's UK office was looking for testers and called the shop. Stephen became a tester on Games for Milton Bradley and then took all of that knowledge he had gained and began pitching his own ideas for how all of those game elements of role-playing games could be condensed for the mass market for kids in the 9 to 11 year old range. That game was Hero Quest, a self-contained group adventure kit in a box for two to five players. Everything you needed to get started was in that box. Everything you ever needed to continue playing was in that box. Attack dice, defense dice, gridded game board that functioned as the base of every map, game cards and tiles, furniture, doorways, walls, plastic miniature character figurines, the quest book that contained the details of all the ready-made adventures, and a privacy screen for the player tasked with managing the game as the master of dungeons. Because one player serves as the de facto game master, an evil wizard named Zargon in the US and Canada, more car everywhere else, why the difference? I don't know. Why do they eat hot dogs with a fork and knife and we eat them with our hands? Why do they have to put on driving shoes whenever they pilot a car? Why are all of their mirrors monochromatic and ours are full color? Why do they high five with both hands at once? Why do all of their chairs have five legs? Nobody knows. 
This player, the Game Master, controls all of the overarching elements of the game, including introduction and advancement of the story, monster management, and placement of architectural elements as they are encountered by the other players. The other players, four ideally, choose from the four pre-made archetypal characters, Barbarian, Elf, Wizard, and Dwarf, each one designed to complement the group, each with their own strengths, compensating for the other's weaknesses. Hero Quest. Deep inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. This is Hero Quest, the fantasy adventure game where winning means mastering the arts of combat. I'll use my broadsword. And magic. Fire of wrath. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Each adventure begins with some exposition to kick things off, to give the players a reason to wander through the treacherous environment, the labyrinth of dangers, the gauntlet of creatures, traps, and evil wizards. And that's it. Get in, throw dice, find treasure, accomplish the mission before dying, switch characters, change game masters, have fun storming the castle. Or escaping a dungeon, assassination plot, retrieve an artifact, prison break, hired hit, bank heist, missing person, all your favorite narrative framing mechanisms are here, and not for nothing, but every single quest can be a buddy story, a rom-com, or a coming-of-age piece. You decide. Or don't, because it's not role-playing. You don't have to go any further than rolling the dice. Don't use a character voice. Don't get angry and attack your teammates. No drama necessary beyond life and death. But if you like role-playing, then this isn't not necessarily the place to get some. You can introduce those elements if you want to. You can carry over weapons or treasure acquired in quests to future quests if you want to. You can give your characters a backstory, a motivation, a funny hat. The good times end when the players either accomplish the mission, that's a win for the players, or all the players are dead, that's a win for Zargon or more card, depending on how you eat your hot dogs. Hero Quest isn't just a game, it's a game system. That means that all the elements are there to play it as is, right out of the box, or expand it, enhance it, and customize it. Milton Bradley knew that players would likely tire of the 14 quests included with the initial release. Two pages in the quest book are dedicated to giving players the tools they need to create their own quests. One page, a blank grid map of the game board. Another page, all of the icons representing the various monsters, traps, treasures, and accoutrement that might be needed for a quest. The instructions suggest photocopying these pages, marking the map accordingly, writing an intro paragraph, and then get to fighting. That page also teased that Milton Bradley would be releasing official expansion modules and additional quests in the near future, which they did. Kicking it off with Keller's Keep in 1989, expansions brought not only new quests, but also new character types, treasure, environmental elements, traps, cards, and new characters and new monsters, which meant new character and monster figures as well. The adventures continued in Return of the Witch Lord, Against the Ogre Horde, and a full adventure design kit in 1990, Wizards of Morkar and the Dark Company in 1991, Frozen Horror and the Mage of the Mirror in 1992, and like Dungeons and Dragons before it, HeroQuest couldn't help but bring out a more advanced version of the game. Advanced Hero Quest came with new miniatures, more complex rules for combat including ranged attacks, modular game board pieces, critical hits and fumbles, a random dungeon generation system, and should you find yourself in the moment, the rules for how to play the game. Hello. Advanced Hero Quest also introduced compatibility with the Warhammer world of miniature tabletop wargaming system because in the early 90s Games Workshop was publishing games all over the place that centered around miniature gaming and nearly all of them took place or could take place in the Games Workshop shared universe of Warhammer, their signature simulated fantasy army combat game system. Hero Quest, Advanced Hero Quest, Blood Bowl, Crunch, Mighty Warriors, Man of War, Battle Masters, Space Crusade, their magazine White Dwarf supplemented all of those games and advertised their new products coming soon to be used with those games. As a brand, Hero Quest was supported by three novels and in 1991, a PC game called Hero Quest. A Nintendo port was in the works but never made it to the shelves. A second PC game, Hero Quest II Legacy of Sorosil, came home in 1994. Milton Bradley and Games Workshop accomplished what they set out to accomplish. They created a gaming system with some life in it that, in 1992, was recognized with an Origins Award by the Academy of Venture Gaming Arts and Design for Best Graphic Presentation of a Board Game of 1991. HeroQuest quickly morphed into both HeroQuest and Advanced HeroQuest. 
1995, it was joined by Warhammer Quest, a less subtle version of the game that less subtly incorporated the gameplay into the world of Warhammer. HeroQuest and Advanced HeroQuest ceased publication in 1997, Warhammer Quest expired in 1998. Players would have to find other outlets for their fantasy adventures, either within the world of Warhammer, back in the dungeons with dragons, or in packs of Magic the Gathering. But that wasn't the end of the story for HeroQuest, because the best thing about HeroQuest is the fans. Today, HeroQuest is still buoyed by an active, engaged, and enthusiastic fan base, not quite the scale of Dungeons & Dragons. If D&D is here, HeroQuest is here. And then if you blow this up, then you can see that the HeroQuest fan base is right here. Those fans have kept the game alive and continue to create their own game boards, quests, and characters. One fan wrote a free-to-download game simulator that allows you to download every official quest ever created and run games by yourself if you want to play alone. But the best thing about HeroQuest isn't the game at all. It's a video called Why HeroQuest is So Great by Bardic Broadcasts. The best thing about HeroQuest is the barbarian. Look at the muscularity. The best thing about Hero Quest is the Broadsword. 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 Fire of wrath. This is an abomination. This is a gargoyle. Oh no, Mormons. You can purchase entire sets of Repro 3D printed playing pieces from the original Hero Quest or newly designed pieces, or you can save up your money and hit the secondary market to purchase a new or used sample of the original game itself. HeroQuest incorporated the core elements and design of other successful games and efficiently repackaged them for a new audience. It was an entry point for a generation of players that fell in love with tabletop gaming before online video game technology and Magic the Gathering completely altered the landscape of gaming altogether. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy or become a channel member at youtube.com slash toygalaxytv slash join. Both Patreon and YouTube channel membership have the same exclusive content, so choose your own adventure. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if you've ever played Hero Quest or if you were all d and I used to play this game called Notebook Adventure Fights. Basically just me, a spiral-bound notebook, and a handful of miniatures. You to spend at least 100, 120 hours creating intricate backgrounds for the characters, origins, stats, interpersonal relationships, and then you just uh, roll dice until there's like a lone survivor. Copyright 1989, Dan Larson Enterprises. Don't steal my ideas. I won't. <laughs> okay.